Hey, what's up everyone? Game Dad here. Now, with all of the rumors and news and everything going on about the PS5 Pro that is coming out, I figured now would be a great opportunity to go over five what I think are absolute must-have games on the PS5 platform. Obviously, if you have a regular PS5 or you have a Slim or you have a disc only or one that reads discs, or if you're gonna get a PS5 Pro, these will all work on there, and I think these are absolute must-own titles. Now, there are some new ones that are coming out very shortly here, like the new Astrobot game, which looks amazing, and they're always coming out with new games, including a state of play that's coming out, which should have a lot of first-party titles in it. But for now, we're gonna take a look at games that are already out, they have been updated multiple times, some even have DLC, and are just awesome. And the first game on the list is Hogwarts Legacy. So first up here with Hogwarts Legacy, I gotta say, I remember playing a lot of the old Harry Potter games whenever they first came out several years ago, and those were just your generic run-of-the-mill game. But with Hogwarts Legacy, they are really onto something special, and I cannot wait to see them expand this universe more, whether it's through DLC or another game or whatever, because this world is expansive. Everything feels like it was done right. The flying on the broom, it feels like you're flying on a broom, especially with those adaptive triggers on the PS5, and it, it just feels like you're actually in this world. The magic feels awesome, battling feels awesome, it's there there's just so much to explore and it's very much if you can see it you can go to it of course there's world boundaries things like that but overall this game is an absolute masterpiece in my opinion and it's graphically impressive the audio design is excellent the characters are fun and engaging and you get to be in that kind of harry potter universe without having the typical oh it has to be harry potter in it it is hogwarts it's the school it's the grounds and it's set in a different time period which also makes it more interesting in my opinion but this game is absolutely superb and you cannot go wrong with it now next up on the list is probably in my top five games of all time, but it's probably like one of my favorite, if not my favorite franchise of all time. And that's saying a lot. There's a lot of great franchises, but that is Horizon 2 Forbidden West. I do not have enough good things to say about Horizon 2 Forbidden West, including the Burning Shores DLC. This game is so good. Before I knew it, I had over 80 hours put into this game because I just I couldn't put it down. It looks amazing. The story continues that of Zero Dawn, which was already an excellent story. They have improved upon basically everything from the first game that you could have any complaint about in this one. And honestly, my only complaint is I have to wait for another Horizon game to come out. And I mean, this game is just so good. It has so much of the different aspects that you wish you could have done in the first game, but you kind of get them right up front in this second version. And the world is massive, it's expansive, there is so much to do, so much to see, so much to explore, and it's set in such a cool new environment being on like the west coast of the United States. And with Burning Shores, you're down in the L.A. Hollywood area. And there's a lot of really fun landmarks that you can see that are basically just ancient ruins now. But overall, this game is absolutely amazing. It's great, excellent gameplay. And the story in this franchise is just, it's so good. And it feels so new and so fresh. And I cannot wait for the next game in this franchise to come out. Now, up next, we have a game that went through a name change before it was actually released and is not only comical, but also is just fun. It's just a good, clean, fun game, and that is Immortals Phoenix Rising. Now, up next here, we have Immortals Phoenix Rising, and originally this was going to be called Gods and Monsters. Now, I am not sure off the top of my head why they changed the name of it, but they did. And in seeing the first trailers, I thought this game was just going to kind of be like the silly version of an Assassin's Creed game. And while to some extent it is kind of that, I mean, it's made by Ubisoft, so it definitely has Assassin's Creed elements to it. 
it is definitely still its own game. It definitely has a more lighthearted approach to mythology than other games have, especially the Assassin's Creed games, but it still keeps it interesting. It still keeps it fun. I really enjoy the color palette, the audio design, the combat in this game. You get a lot more fun stuff, and it gives you a lot of like Greek mythology. They definitely take liberties with some things, of course, but it's something that keeps you engaged. It's very expansive. It has a huge world to explore. It's got a ton of different stuff that you can do. It's got all kinds of different movesets and skills and magical abilities and items and crafting. And there's just so much that you can do in this. It's just, I, it's hard to explain everything that this game has to offer, but it has a ton to offer, especially once you then branch into all of the DLC. Plus, the game is multi-platform, and it's cross-platform saving. So you can play it on one platform, then go pick it up on another, and take over from there. So I think that is absolutely the right choice for a game like this, because it gives you more options to play it. But overall, this has got to be one of my favorite Ubisoft games of all time. And I'm a huge Assassin's Creed fan, but I think this is better than a lot of those. Now, up next, we have an absolute masterpiece of a game. This franchise is very long-running, very long-spanned, but specifically, this iteration of this franchise has just been so freaking good, and that is Marvel Spider-Man 2. Now, here we are talking about yet another masterpiece of a game, and this is Marvel Spider-Man 2. Now, the original Spider-Man game that came out on PS4, it was just iconic. It was so good, and all I could think of constantly was, wow, this reminds me of Spider-Man 2 from the PS2, because the swinging, it just felt right, it felt good, and the game was just epic. And then on PS5, they launched Miles Morales, and then, of course, Spider-Man 2 came out, and it just took everything to a whole new level, and... It allowed you to be living in the same world that you were in before, but it added enough new stuff to it to keep it super interesting. It had a nice fresh story to it, and the gameplay is so good. The fighting mechanics are some of the best in any kind of open world game like this that I have ever played. And the customization is just amazing. You have so many skills, so many different things that you can do, so many costumes you can unlock. And then on top of all of that, you get all of that twice because you get Spider-Man and you get Miles Morales' Spider-Man. And just overall, I cannot think of a single thing that I do not like about this game. And I have never met anyone that doesn't truly enjoy this game. If somebody has legitimate complaints about it, I would love to hear it because I don't know what they could possibly be. This game is awesome and it has a really nicely ramped up difficulty curve. That way when you're first starting the game, nothing is too difficult, but then it really ramps up from there. And if you want something really hard right out of the gate, you can choose those difficulty levels. But overall, this game is just fantastic and just such a treat to play and I cannot wait for either a DLC or another game in this franchise. Now, before we dive into the final game on today's list, if you like today's video, then let me know down in the comments below, and also be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons if you feel that I've earned it with this video. Now, the last game up for today is a super long running franchise, and this game specifically was actually used to show off the capabilities of the PS5, and rightfully so, because this game is so good. And that is Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. Now next up here, we have Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. And honestly, this one is just, this one is a treasure because it really shows everything that the PS5 was capable of. And honestly, the only other game I can think of on the PS5 that can do the console that kind of justice is probably Astro's Playground because it literally is a demo for everything the console and the controller can do. But this game, it took everything in the Ratchet & Clank universe to the next level while still maintaining true to its roots. So it is still a super fun Ratchet & Clank game, but this has an awesome story. They super take advantage of all the tech that the PS5 hardware, including the, the DualSense controller, all have to offer. And just everything is so amazing in this game. Dynamic lighting, 
You have all of the combat, all the different weapons you can do. The story is super fun. There are super diverse areas that you can go to. You can constantly be like portal switching and rifting through all these different worlds. And just everything that gets added to this game is just a treat to behold and a treat to experience. And it is so much fun. This was one of the launch titles, I believe, for the PS5. And if you haven't played this game yet, I'm sure you can pick it up on the cheap now. And it is so, so good. Plus, you'll be able to go into New Game Plus and do even more stuff after that. So if you have not played Rift Apart, I absolutely highly recommend this game. So there you have it, everyone. Those are five absolute must pick up games, I feel, for the PS5. And it's no coincidence that these five games are also five games that I got platinum trophies in because they were that good. Rift Apart had a couple of different playthroughs in it. Hogwarts, this one, I even went through and did the extra playthrough of each house up to a certain point that you're supposed to get just so I could get the platinum trophy. Horizon 2 Forbidden West, I mean, the DLC in this game alone could be an entire other game. It's that good. And Immortals Phoenix Rising was so good, I bought it on every single platform and beat it on every platform because I enjoyed this game so much. So that is five amazing games for you to be able to choose from. And if it were up to me, I would say get every single one of them. But obviously, you know, finances can be a constriction, but some of these games have been out for quite a while now and you could probably find them on sale or used for a very decent price. And a quick recap one more time, we have Hogwarts Legacy, we have Horizon 2 Forbidden West, we have Immortals Phoenix Rising, we have Marvel Spider-Man 2, and we have Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. Now, if you liked today's video and you wanna see another recent video that I did, then go ahead and check out this area right here. And as always, I'm Game Dad. I thank you all for watching and I'll catch you later.